Assalamualaikum dear students, I hope you all are fine and in the best conditions of your health. So for the course of medicinal chemistry, today we shall discuss about the drug receptor interactions. Key concepts which we shall discuss in this lecture are short and long duration of action of drugs, binding of the drug with the receptor and the factors which affect such bonding, and we shall study about the agonist and antagonist, and we shall study about the selectivity of the drug response. So firstly, when the drug binds with the receptor, right? So such type of bonding or such type of interaction, there are two types. Number one, if the drug binds for a shorter duration and the binding is reversible, right? So it can bind with the receptor and detach with the receptor. So if the binding is reversible and if the binding is short term, this is the mm -hmm. first type of bonding in which we say the drug with short duration of action reversible. So normally such type of interactions result in formation of a weaker bond, right? So when the drug binds with the receptor through a weaker bond, then such durations, uh, such drugs have short duration of action and such interactions are reversible. But in case if a drug binds with the receptor through a stronger bond, such as a covalent bond, then such drugs have longer duration of action and such interactions are irreversible. So just for your general interest, it is ideally preferred that the drug binds with the receptor through reversible interactions because if the drug binds with the receptor through a covalent bond, then in that case, the nature of the receptor will be changed. So we don't want the nature of the receptor will be changed to be changed. We just want the drug to bind with the receptor and show its biological activity, right? So we have two types of drug receptor interactions. One, in which the drug has a weaker bond with the receptor, such type of interactions are reversible and such type of drugs will have short duration of action. So such type of drugs will only show their duration, action for a duration until the drug remains bonded with the receptor. So once it gets detached with the receptor, so its action will be stopped. While if the drug binds irreversibly with the receptor through a stronger bond such as a covalent bond, then such drug will have will continue to have their action for a prolonged duration until the drug gets removed from the receptor. Right? So the receptor molecules are basically macromolecules. In the previous lecture we saw that the receptor molecules or which we call target molecules that are normally proteins, they can be some enzymes, they can be nucleic acids, etc. But the macromolecules, which are the target molecules or the receptor molecules, they have protein-like structures, they have specific three-dimensional structures, right? And whenever a drug comes and it wants to bind with the receptor molecule, then the drug does not completely bind with the complete molecule. Instead, drug will only bind with a certain specific area of this target molecule. Right, and that specific area or the specific receptor site are basically the function groups, right? So just remember that macromolecules, whatever be the macromolecule is or your receptor is, that's a chemical compound. But the chemical compound has a large number of function groups here. But any drugs that if it has to interact with a receptor, so this drug will form some sort of interaction or some sort of chemical bonding with the function groups. So the function group of the drug will bind with the function group of your receptor right so right so it's the function group of your drugs that interact with the function group of your target molecule or the receptor molecule so since your receptor molecule has a large surface area it has a larger size it means it has larger number of function groups so the drug only bind with certain functional groups that are present in a specific area, right? So that specific area in which your drug interacts, this is known as the receptor site, right? Also, in the previous lecture, we saw that in order for a drug to show its biological effect, it is compulsory that drug maintains some minimum three-point attachment, right? It means that functional groups of the drug should bind with at least three site or three function group of your receptor molecule so if it can make a three point fit if we can make a three point attachment on the receptor molecule then in that case the drug will be able to show its biological effect but if it's not able to maintain a three point fit or it's not able to maintain a three point attachment in that case the biological effect of the drug will not be observed right also uh, it has been found that the 
chemical structure of the drug should be complementary to the structure of receptor site means the drug should have functional group that can bind or interact with the functional group present on the receptor site so if the drugs functional group are not compatible with the functional group of your receptor then in such cases the drug will not be able to bind with the receptor and the drug will not be able to show its biological effect right also if you change the molecular structure of the drug so the interaction of the drug with the receptor will also change drastically because the interactions of the drug with the receptor are dependent on the functional groups and the arrangement of functional groups on the drug. So if you change the structure of the drug, then the interaction of the drug with the receptor will also change. Right? So just remember that it's very important for the drug to bind with the receptor. So if a drug is not able to bind with the receptor, it will not be able to show the biological action. Right? So there are several chemical forces that result in temporary binding of the drug to the receptor. So that can involve weaker forces such as uh, the London dysphagian forces or the dipole dipole moment or it can make use of stronger forces like covalent bonds. So covalent bonds are practically irreversible. Right? So by definition the drug receptor interactions should be reversible. So covalent bond formation is rather rare, right? And whenever the covalent bonding occurs with the receptor, so that results in the toxic situation, right? So the formation of covalent bond of the drug with the receptor that is never ever preferred, right? So ideally, the drug receptor interaction should be reversible, and such interactions should be weaker interactions. So if your drug contains acidic group or amino group, so these functional groups you know that they are ionized as physiological pH. So if the pH is basic, the acid is ionized, and if the pH is acidic, amine is ionized, right? So you know that your body has different pH in different regions. So these functional groups are ionized at different physiological pH. So whenever you have carboxylic acid group or amino group in your drug, they can predict that such drugs, since they are ionized, and so such drugs may involve ionic interactions with the receptor site. Right, so ionic interaction of the drug with the receptor site are possible if your drug has carboxylic acid or amino group functional groups. Then we have polar polar interactions. So polar polar interactions include dipole dipole interactions, right? So hydrogen bonding is also type of dipole dipole interactions. So if if your drug has hydrogen bonding or it has hydrogen bond, then it can form hydrogen bonds with the receptor. Right, uh, and it can also involve the exchange of hydrogen bond with the drug molecule, water, and the receptor site. Right, so by seeing the structure, we can predict that which type of interactions the drug can have with the receptor molecule. Then we have hydrophobic interactions. The hydrophobic interactions are formed between the non-polar hydrocarbon groups on the drug and on the receptor. So if your drug has long chain of hydrocarbon groups and the receptor has also such groups, then the hydrocarbon chains of the drug and the receptor will form interactions, which is sort of hydrophobic interactions. So these bonds are not specific, but the interactions help to exclude water molecule right, from the surroundings. So if you want to repel water molecules, it's a good idea to include a longer chain hydrocarbon groups into the system because they are hydrophobic so they will repel water from the system then we have repulsive interactions so repulsive interactions can occur because of repulsion between same charges or the repulsive interaction can also occur because of this direct hindrance right so if you have negative charge on your drug and a negative charge on your receptor then in that case the negative charges since they are same charges they will repel each other also, if you have steric hindrance because of presence of the bulkier groups or because of electronic repulsion between your groups, then in that case, this will be called steric hindrance, right? So whether the steric hindrance or whether the repulsion between like charges, repulsive forces always decrease the stability of the drug receptor interactions, right? So the drug receptor interactions should be stable. So since the repulsive forces decrease the stability of such interactions, so these do not favor stable drug receptor interaction and the biological action of the drug is affected because of these repulsive forces. Right, so drug 
intraceptor interaction with the receptor site, right? So we are considering that how drug interacts with the receptor site. So consider that we have a ligand. So whenever we say ligand in the medicinal chemistry, you must have the idea that ligand can be a drug or it can be a biological molecule. So if your system is working properly, then your biological molecules are binding with the receptor and they are carrying out their function. But because of certain physiological disorder or because of certain disease, this biological molecule is not available or is not able to bind with the receptor. So what we do is that we make use of a drug. So this drug will bind with the receptor and carry out the work that was previously being performed by this biological molecule, right? So anything that binds with the receptor is called a ligand. So ligand can be a biological molecule, which is the binder in case if the system is healthy, and it can be a drug in case if you have certain sort of a disease. So this ligand must have a specific shape to fit with the receptor site, right? And to show a biological response. Just for example, we are considering the process of nerve impulse conduction, right? So we are considering that the process is conduction of nerve impulse, right? So one thing important is that once the drug or the ligand binds with the receptor, right? So this substrate may either initiate a response, so if the substrate means a ligand. So this ligand may either initiate a response or it may prevent a response from occurring, right? So you know that you have a receptor and the receptor has a receptor site. So what do we mean by receptor site? Receptor sites are the function groups that can interact with any ligand. So when we have a ligand that comes and binds with the receptor, so this ligand can either initiate a response or it can prevent a response from occurring. So if a ligand initiates a response, such type of ligand is called agonist. And if the ligand prevents a response from occurring, such a ligand is known as antagonist. So if your drug is initiating a response, the drug will be called an agonist. And if the drug is preventing a response from occurring, the drug will be considered as antagonist. So antagonist is a ligand which produces stimulation type response that will it will initiate a response. And for a substrate or for a ligand to be agonist, its structure should be very, very similar to the substrate and should be able to fit with the receptor site and initiate a response, right? While if your drug is an antagonist, right, it means that it will block the response or it will depress the response, then in that case, it should not perfectly fit with the receptor site, right? It should only partially fit with the receptor site and the purpose is that it will just blocking the receptor site so that nothing can bind with the receptor so the antagonist does not need to be perfectly fit with the receptor site right so it should be such that it cannot produce a response it's just blocking the receptor site so that any other ligand ag or agonist cannot uh, bind with the receptor so just in order to explain this thing, let's consider that we have a receptor site and this is the site at which your ligand will bind, right? So this is here at which ligand will bind. So we are considering the nerve peripheral, nerve impulse conduction. So in order for a nerve impulse to be conducted, you can see here we have a neurotransmitter. So this neurotransmitter is the biological molecule, right? So it's the, it is the ligand which is normally present when you are in a healthy state so this neurotransmitter comes and it binds with this receptor site so you can see that this neurotransmitter has a perfect shape to bind with the receptor here right so it comes it binds with the receptor and what happens that it gives the pharmacological response right so this is the neurotransmitter now suppose that because of certain physiological disorders so this neurotransmitter is unable to bind so what we get we give some drug so this drug comes it has similar structure and it perfectly binds with the receptor site and it also gives the same physiological response that was given by the neurotransmitter so since this ligand is producing the same response as the biological molecule is producing so it means that it's initiating a response so this is called an agonist well we have another molecule here so this molecule just goes and it blocks the surface of this receptor site 
right? It forms a lid on the receptor site so that no neurotransmitter or no agonist should bind with the substrate, right? So this antagonist doing what? It's just blocking the site. So since the site is being blocked, so no pharmacological response will be observed. So this is the difference between agonist and antagonist. For any drug or for any ligand to be agonist, it should have a perfect structure so that it can bind with the receptor site. While antagonist should partially bind with the part receptor site and the purpose of antagonist is just to block the receptor site so that nothing can bind with the receptor site and produce any biological response. So now before going further, there are certain terms that you should be uh, considering and you should remember uh, with respect to the course of the medicinal chemistry. The first term is potency. Potency means that the amount of drug needed to produce a given response, right? So if higher amount of drug is needed, then we say the drug is not potent because you have to increase the concentration to get a desired response. So if a drug is producing a uh, high response with small concentration we say the drug is highly potent because it has higher potential so small concentration is giving huge response right so potency is the amount of drug that is needed to produce a given response so normally the potency is the amount of drug dose that produces desired effect in the 50 percent of the population so when you are considering the potency of a drug when you are calculating the potency of a drug then we say then we observe that which concentration of the drug is producing the desired effect in 50% of the population, right? So if the 50% of the population is cured by that concentration, we say that the potency is ED50, right? So ED50 and LD50, they are basically a type of potency. So ED50 is an effective dose. So the dose of drug that produces effect in 50% of the population, right? And if the dose kills 50% of the exposed population, then such type is, then such uh, a situation is called LD50 or the lethal dose 50. Then we have another term that's called therapeutic effect. The therapeutic index is the measure of drug safety, how safe a drug is, right? And this is equal to LD50 by ED50, right? So if the lethal dose is higher it means you have to give higher dose in order to kill 50 percent of the population right while ed50 is effective dose 50 it means that if you are given less concentration and the 50 percent population is getting finer 50 percent of the population is getting cured so this drug will be considered as ideal right so ideally if you have ld50 so ld50 is lethal dose Lethal dose wo dose hai jisne 50% population ko kill karna hai, right? So agar aapki thodi si concentration 50% logon ko maar rahi hai, then iska matlab hai ki ye drug highly lethal hai. Lekin agar aapko concentration bohut zyada badhani pad rahi hai aur bohut zyada concentration badhane ke baad log maar rahe hain, iska matlab hai aapki drug safe hai. So therapeutic index is actually measure of drug safety and this is ratio of LD50 by ED50. Iska matlab ye hai ki LD50 jitni zyada hogi, matlab aapko jitni zyada concentration badha ke lethal loss ka nahi padegi divide by ed50 jitni kam hogi so jitna zyada ye ratio hogi utni aapki drug safe hai so ideally ld50 should be higher and ed50 should be lower means the concentration of a drug that is killing population that should be higher so higher dose should be required to kill the 50 percent of the population and effective dose 50 should be lower so the less concentration of the drug is required to produce a given therapeutic response right so therapeutic index should be higher Higher the therapeutic index, safer the drug is. Right, now we have factors that affect the drug receptor interactions, right? So the two basic properties of the re drug receptor interactions determine the biological response, which will be exhibited by the drug. Number one, the ability of the drug to bind with the receptor. So just remember that a drug will not be able to show its biological effect until it binds with the receptor. Right. Second, the ability of the drug to alter the activity of its receptor. So it's not important for the drug to just bind with the receptor. The drug should be able to alter its activity. Right. So if the drug binds with the receptor and the receptor does nothing, so the drug will not be able to show its biological response. Right. So the drug should have two abilities. Number one, it should have the ability to bind with the receptor. Number two, that after binding, it should be able to alter 
the activity of its receptor. So if both of the things don't work or either of the thing doesn't work, then in that case, the drug receptor interaction will have no advantage and such drug will not be able to show its biological activity. Now, the drug when binds with the receptor, so how strong is the interaction, right? The strength of this interaction between the drug and the receptor is called affinity. So if a drug binds strongly with the receptor, we say the drug has higher affinity for the receptor. While if the drug binds very weakly to the receptor, we say the drug has lower affinity, right? So there are a number of factors which affect uh, the interaction of the drug between receptors. So these factors affect and control the strength of the interaction. These factors affect the duration of the interaction between drug and the receptor and they also affect the type of drug receptor interaction, right? So these are different factors which will decide whether the strength of interaction will be weak or strong. They will determine whether the interaction will be of short duration or long duration and they will also uh, affect whether the type of interaction will be ionic, they will be covalent, they will be hydrophobic or they will be some uh, steric hindrance type of interactions, right? So these are the factors which affect the binding of the drug to the receptor. Number one, the size and shape of the drug molecules. The size and shape of the drug molecule should be compatible with the receptor side of your receptor. Number two, the number, type and special arrangement of the binding sites of the receptor. So the stereochemistry of the receptor is very important. The stereochemistry of the receptor and the drug structure should be compatible so that the drug molecule should be able to bind with the receptor. The third factor which affects the binding is the intermolecular forces between the drug and the binding site of the receptor, right? So if there are wonder wall forces, then you know that wonder wall forces are the weak bonds and weak forces, and they are reversible interactions, and they are temporary. So the word transient means temporary, right? So wonder wall forces are weaker bonds, they are temporary bonds, and they are reversible. Whenever there are hydrogen bonds, the hydrogen bonds are of intermediate strength. So they are not too much strong, they are not too much weaker, but still they are temporary and they are reversible. Covalent bonds are stronger bonds, they are long-lasting bonds, and they have irreversible effect. So whenever your drug is forming a covalent bond with the receptor, so this is the least thing we require. We do not prefer such interactions because formation of covalent bond with the receptor will result in toxicity. It will res not result in direct and desired biological response. Rightly, ideally, the binding of the drug to the receptor or drug to the target molecule must involve weaker bonds. Should be reversible interactions, right? But when the drug binds with the receptor, a complex is formed, which is known as drug receptor complex, right? This is not static. It doesn't mean that when the drug binds with the receptor, this is the end of story, but rather, the drug continues to bind and unbind. It continues to associate and dissociate with the receptor as long as the drug is present, right? So the ease with which the association and dissociation occurs is indicated by the dissociation constant, right? The dissociation constant KD is equal to concentration of the drug and concentration of the receptor divided by the concentration of drug receptor complex. Right? So if the complex concentration is higher, KD value will be lower. It means that the concentration of the drug is higher, it means the complex is forming very, very easily. But if the concentration of drug in the receptor is higher and the concentration of drug receptor complex is lower, it means that KD value will be higher and it, that's showing that drug receptor interaction is not stronger. Right? So the relative stability of the drug receptor complex or the relative ease with which association and dissociation occur, this is uh, indicated by the dis dissociation constant. So ideally for a drug to be, uh, to have more affinity than this, in that case, the concentration of this drug receptor complex should be higher, means KD value should be lower, right? So each type of drug receptor complex will have some characteristic values. So different type of uh, interactions result in different type of complexes and the complex that has lowest value will be much more feasible, right? So you just remember that drugs that has high affinity for the receptor, so affinity is the strength of bond between, strength of interaction between the drug and the receptor. So if a drug has higher affinity for the receptor, then its KD value should be lower. 
right? So in general, the drugs that have lower KD value, they require lower concentration to achieve a sufficient response, right? So here we have uh, another term that's important from medicinal chemistry point of view, that's efficacy. Efficacy is represented by Emacs. So efficacy is the maximum response which is achieved from applied dose of a drug. So for example, you give a dose and you get a response. So what maximum response you can get from a particular dose, this is called efficacy, right? So if you use small concentration of a drug and you get very, very high response, then we say the drug is very, very efficient or is that efficient. Right? But if you have to increase the concentration to get some response that is very, very minimum, then the drug is not efficient. It's not efficient, so its effic efficacy will be lower. Right? So efficacy is the maximum response that is achieved from applied dose of a drug. So you should know these terms of affinity and efficacy and uh, ED50 and LD50 and the therapeutic index. Next, we have the selectivity of the drug response. So we know that drug always shows response when it binds with the receptor. So there are many receptors that are present in the body. And if a drug binds with all type of receptors, then the drug will produce so many type of responses because each type of receptor is responsible for a particular biological activity. So if your drug is binding with more than one receptors, it means that drug is producing more than one biological activity and most of those biological activities are not desired, right? So once you're, you are taking the drug, the drug reaches the cell, the cell will respond to only those drugs that can bind with the receptor, right? So if a drug has higher affinity for only one receptor, then such drug will be only selective because that will only bind with that receptor for which it has affinity and such drugs will have lower side effects, right? So if a drug binds with large amount of receptors, then such drugs will have more side effects. But if a drug has only affinity for one type of receptor, so it will only bind to that receptor and the side effects will be lower, right? So if a drug has high affinity, high affinity means the strength of bonding between the drug and the receptor is strong. And if a drug has efficient, it has higher efficacy, it means small concentration produces a larger response, then in that case, if a drug has higher affinity and higher efficacy, then low concentration will be required to produce a desired biological response, and such drug will have non, lower non-selective interactions, means the side effects of such drugs will be lower. Right, so Ideally, a drug should be specific for only one type of receptor, but this is not actually the case. Only few drugs are specific for only one type of receptor. So most of the drugs exhibit selectivity towards different receptors based on different affinity, right? So some will have higher affinity for that receptor, some will have lower affinity, but most of the drugs have affinity for more than one type of receptor. Furthermore, if you increase the concentration of the drug, then the drug will bind with even receptors for which it has a lower affinity and as a result that will produce some side effects. For example, if you are using a lower concentration, then in that case the drug will specifically bind with the receptor for which it has higher affinity. But if you keep on increasing the drug concentration, in that case the drug will also bind with the receptor for which it has a lower affinity. Right? So if a drug binds with large amount of receptors, so that's producing a large number of side effects as well. Right? So also remember that the tissues which possess certain receptors will only, only respond to the drug. So you're taking the drug, the drug is entering the blood, and the blood is circulating throughout the, your body. So it means the drug should act on every part of the body, but this is not the case. Drug will only act at places where there are the receptor for which the drug has affinity. Right? So if you have the tissue that has the receptor for which the drug has to bind, then the drug will show its effect there. But if the tissue does not have those receptors, the drug will not show, if it, show its effect there. Right? So it means that if your receptors are much more restricted in their distribution, it means if your receptors are present only at specific area, then the drug will have its action only at both places. For example, if the receptors are present only in lungs, so the drug will only act on the lungs tissue. 
But if the receptors are spread in lungs as well as your intestines, as well as your skin, then the drug will act on lungs, on your skin, as well as on your intestines, right? So if the distribution of the drug receptors are limited, means that if the drug receptor are only present at some specified position, then the drug will also act on only those specified positions, right? So such drug action will be more selective. So now let's consider that the drug and the receptor are getting closer, right? So you have a receptor and you have a ligand. So here we are considering the ligand as our drug, right? So once the ligand is approaching the receptor, right? What happens that interactions start building between the ligand and the receptor. So in the start, when the drug and the ligand, or when the drug and the receptor are approaching each other, so in the start, there are some electrostatic interactions between the ligand and the receptor. So in the start, we have ionic interactions between ligand and receptor. So as these continue to come closer, then we have the short range interactions that include the hydrogen bonding and the one one reactions, right? So electrostatic interactions, which are also known as ionic interactions, these are long range. Long range interactions are those interactions that can occur at far distance. So for example, when your drug and receptor are far away, but still, they can be connected together, they can attract each other by ionic interactions. So because of ionic interactions, so those two will continue to come closer, and when they are sufficiently close, then in that case, at that point, we will develop some short-range interactions. So such short-range interactions include those hydrogen bonds and the one wall interactions, right? So because of these interactions, next what happens, the binding occurs, and after binding occurs, so there are some conformational changes which can range from modest changes of few atoms to movement of whole macromolecule domain, right? So you know conformational changes, conformational changes, the change in structure by rotation of single bonds here, right? So the molecule will continue to move until there is some stable conformation with minimum static interactions, right? So this is about drug receptor interaction. So far we have discussed that whenever the drug binds with the receptor, right? So the interactions between the drug receptor can be ionic, they can be covalent, they can be nonpolar, and they, they can be repulsive interactions as well. So it's very important for the drug to bind with the receptor. And not only it's important for the drug to bind with the receptor, it's also important the drug should bind and should produce some change in the receptor structure. So if a drug is not able to change the activity of the receptor, then biological effect will not be produced. Also, we saw about the terms like efficacy, we, uh, we also studied about the affinity, we studied about the potency. They should know all of these terms together, right? So also we studied that when the ligand and receptor are approaching each other, the first type of interactions that occur between the ligand and the receptor are the ionic interactions. So as the two groups are the ligand or receptor continue to come closer, then the interactions between the drug and the receptor will become short range hydrogen bonds and one one interactions. So the details of this type of interactions will be uh, explained in the next coming lecture. I hope you have understood this lecture well so far. Thank you.